You were asking me about me. I was never asked about me. Так ее и делим до 11 и после 11 сентября. Why do they hate us? Why do we have so many enemies? It's been 15 years since 9/11, but terrorism is still there. Those were the good old days when friends and family were allowed to go straight to the air bridge to meet you. I'm the girl with the balloons. I'm Yana, a 15-year-old exchange student from Russia, staying with an American family. I'm in the U.S. under the Freedom Support Act, a program designed to offer a taste of life in a democracy. America has already taught me to greet everything with wow and cool. It let me discover the taste of french fries and gave me my first ever pair of contact lenses. It's 15 years since reality in America changed forever. I wonder if the words freedom and democracy have a different ring to them now too. I've come back after all these years to see how ordinary Americans feel now and how they see their future. What's wrong with you? I just get a job. I don't understand. Why is it so bad? Oh, you, uh, you have asthma? Big deal. Who cares? You're afraid a terrorist is going to blow up the train that you're riding in in the city? Just get it together. Figure it out. Get over it. Do you have people literally telling this to your face? Yes. I have people. How about, um, how about members of the Congress? <laughs> it's not just people. There are people that think this is a joke. Let's, let's take, I forgot to take my inhalers. So okay. stay right there. I didn't, I have all of them. I just have to get them. Okay. I'll be I'm back sorry. in one second. It's okay. One of the benefits of um, having lung issues is that you can't, you can't get angry like that. I went to ground zero because I thought I could help, but it turned out that I couldn't do very much. Instead of being a help, I turned into a casualty. And now I have to be taken care of to the tune of well over $100,000 a year for just medicines alone. You have to take three different ones at a time. Yeah. This is my badge, actually. I always do that to show respect to the dead. So I used to wear that on my uniform. But I wrote a song after 9-11. Oh, you did? That's how I dealt with it, yeah. Yeah, this is it. talking, it brings you close to it. It's like that hot potato nobody wants to touch. But it's a hot potato, you know? It still um, is. It's still a hot potato. 
it doesn't go away. It doesn't. This is something that we have to live for for the rest of our life. My family's 100 years in New York City. We've been living here 100 years. So I'm more of a New Yorker than probably anyone here. My family has been through it all. They participated in a lot of the important developments in New York City, working on construction sites, the George Washington Bridge, or the Empire State Building. I'm a twin, and me and my twin sister. We had to be about seven or eight, I guess. I, and my parents took us to see the Twin Towers under construction. You know, we joked that the Twin Towers were being built in our honor, and one, one was named John, the other was named Jennifer. Yeah, it was just, uh, you know, the little kids playing games. Was it a symbol of something back then, you know, the, like, highest? It was a symbol of, of the might of America, of the, the, this great city, this great country, that we could build not just one great tower, but two great towers, right? Two magnificent towers. А потому что его большой босс сказал, Алекс, вот будет конференция, и ты ее будешь проводить, так что ты и выбирай место, где тебе нравится, там и делай. Он говорит, конечно, в, на 106 этаже Window of the World, конечно, пусть они все любуются Нью-Йорком, они со всего мира приезжают, отовсюду. Nelly Braginskaya was 43 when she came to the U.S. from the Soviet Union with her son. She had no money or connections, but a lot of hope for a better future for her only child. I didn't take the project on that day because the bridge was closed, 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 the bridge was closed. Я приехала на завтра, и мне на встречу поднялся босс и двое мужчин и женщина. Но по виду я поняла, что это сакаэтристы. И они с двух сторон встали. Я говорю, что? Что меня успокаивает? Не надо. Я в порядке. И сын в порядке. Мы еще тут будем пить шампанское и водку тоже русскую. Все будет в порядке. считаете, что, что сын выбросился, выбросился из окна? Во-первых, я знаю Алекса. Он не будет сидеть в дыму и ждать, пока он задохнется. Никогда в жизни. И это не тот человек. Во-вторых, когда мне вернули его бумажник, на конверсии было написано, что это айтем номер один. Это первая вещь, которая была найдена под первым номером. Сегодня упал дом и завтра наш Конечно, он выбросился. Конечно. У него меняется выражение глаз. Я встаю утром и подхожу к нему. Я с ним здороваюсь, я его целую, говорю, что я его очень люблю. Обязательно читаю молитву. Обязательно. Я чувствую, что он есть. Он всегда здесь. Он всегда со мной. Я советуюсь. Мысли нас спрашивают, какая это мелодия, какая это музыка, какой то фильм, какой то спектакль стали показывают. Это он слушал, это он пел, это он любил, это он читал. Я открываю его по мерке на книгах. Ну, Он живет, он здесь. 
он со мной все время, я слышу его. Советую с ним, прошу, что ли делать, не делать. Глаза отвечают. talk about 9-11 she's only three we, we're just starting to talk about bad things that happen sometimes she's gonna study it in in school as part of history and i will show her i guess some pictures and tell her a little bit about i guess what i did i never really thought about this You know, I grew up in Colombia. I mean, when I came to this country, my city was the most dangerous place in the world. So I grew up with an awareness of really bad things happening. And I mean, maybe that's why I became a trauma psychologist. Maybe that's why I was able to deal with people in pain. I was 25 years old at the time. I can tell you, Thousand, a thousand stories about 9-11. You know, I could tell the story about the widow. I could tell the story about the person who saw people falling because they, they were desperate to evacuate. They wanted to kill themselves. They were cutting themselves. They were pulling their hair out because some people just could not get the vision of seeing others fall off the building out of their minds. They couldn't stop thinking about when they evacuated all the stairs, you know, see, scream, hearing screams of people. Most days were difficult, some were awful. Some were like, it's just too much. Every day was a new challenge. There were lines of patience. How did you feel? Didn't you feel scared and you know, frustrated and not knowing. You know, I don't think I felt anything, quite frankly. So, it's hard to talk about it, you see. It's okay. No. Oh. You're asking me about me. I was never asked about me. Well, from, from the therapist's perspective, most of my time is spent asking questions and finding ways to heal someone, you know. I'm always focused, like, how can I make this person have a better tomorrow? So, you know, in many ways, in order to do that, you have to shut down. So you shut down. And you can't really predict for how long a person will shut down. I think I've been very shut down. <laughs> Traumatic events stay with you. Every anniversary, days before, days after, you feel tense, you feel anxious, you feel the same sense of, oh, of like fear and distress that you felt before. And that's what people will tell you. This is very good food. Should we? No, I like it. We can shape it. Yeah, tell us a few words about Chubby the new tree. About what? Chubby the tree. Chubby? What's the chubby is? Pet. Pet. Okay. He's the best one I've seen here. It's beautiful. I like it. It's so white and it's so green. Let's go back to where America was before September 11th. People were more carefree. They didn't think about terrorism. They didn't think about war or attacks. That was something that was happening far away. If you drive a lot here through all these small towns, you will see almost every town has a monument like this. Really? Almost every town. You know, every, every town here lost three, four, five people. I think what's very tragic for Americans, and again, we, so a lot of people are still in a state of denial. Right? They, they really don't want to talk about it. They don't want to remember it. I think there's more and more now suspicion of outsiders, especially when you get out of the big cities in America. Everyone is looking at each other as sort of like a potential maybe threat, terrorist. It's soaking into people's consciousness on the subconscious level. This idea, if you see something, say something. It's taken me, say, three years to get finally to be accepted here in this town. I am pretty much a local guy. 
people know my family. I'm still an outsider, you see? I'm not, I've been away for a long time. I've been away for a long time. And that was never an issue before. We really did have a tradition, a history of rights and democracy in this country up until 9-11. I came from the old America, where you couldn't have surveillance cameras. That was considered unconstitutional, an invasion of privacy. I remember huge scandals when I was a kid, because the police had a suspect, and they were going through the suspect's garbage, which was, which was on the curbside. But they didn't have a search warrant from the court. So the judge said that's illegal. The police have no right to go through the garbage of a suspect until they get a search warrant. I mean, now it sounds ridiculous. The police can, they can break down your door with guns, throw you to the ground, threaten your entire family, and they don't need a warrant. Under the pretext of anti-terrorist measures, they can do almost anything they want by using the, the terrorist threat. They can justify any action. We have to accept it. That's the reality. That's the new America. It's like, welcome to the new America. That just left that never came back and then there are new people like me who came to new york wasn't afraid to come to new york and move here even though the attacks happened you know several years prior i love new york everything's changed the very idea of talking and having a conversation just you and i as regular people about terrorists or terrorism or things we're seeing on tv all the time people didn't talk like that we didn't discuss those things we weren't thinking like that it's common language now isn't that something what about your rights and freedoms? Are you willing to give some of them up now to stay safer? I would be okay with some of it, or maybe all of it, if it means a safer country and place to live. Because ultimately, whether someone's tapping my phone or not is not as significant as someone, you know, bombing someone down the street when there's a marathon or a plane goes by or something like that. I mean, do you have any idea how close the helicopters get to where I live? Like, if a helicopter or a plane wanted to come right now in this building, we're, we're, you know, we're 61 stories high. That could happen. So I will give up that to make sure that a plane doesn't do something like it did before. And I think that's the challenge. Everyone's trying to figure out what's the next thing that's gonna happen. This building starts on the 50th floor for the apartments, so I only get to my apartment from the elevator. I've never taken the stairs all the way down. I should time myself to get out. count on one hand from 9 11 till now how many times i've been on the train i won't go phones always charged never turned off um always have my badge and my id on me always god forbid something happens you can get access where others can't i always have a certain amount of money with me in case the atm stop working i've never driven anything but a jeep since 9 11 because i remember saying well a jeep will get over a lot of debris so if they knock down buildings i can get out of here i can drive over it I just instinctively would watch planes fly over whenever I heard them. So I just, whenever I see a plane, I just, I mean, and I noticed that I'm with friends and they do the same thing. Oh, and then they just watch it go by. And as soon as it's out of sight, okay. I mean, something in my head's like, all right, you know, that's good. Plane's out of the area. I'm glad that I volunteer here at the museum. When given the opportunity to talk about the people that were lost that day, um, give people a firsthand account of what happened. And then when given the opportunity to talk about my friends that I lost, because their memory needs to stay alive. I mean, there's 2,977 people that day that were murdered. The hundreds that have died since then that everybody forgets now. 
you know, my great days are with my kids and my grandkids. If I didn't have a family, I, I, it's not, we wouldn't be having this conversation, Yana. I would have, you know, ended my life a long time ago because it was that painful. Most of terrorism is not the actual act, it's the fear. Yeah, they, they've accomplished that all right. I mean, I'd hate to admit it. I was so suspicious once when I was flying that I, I mean, I went up to the airline and I said, I just feel uncomfortable. The worst thing for me was they actually didn't let the guy fly. I mean, I remember the air marshals letting him board. As soon as everybody sat down, they got up and they took him off the plane. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, did I make a mistake or was that something? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I think I have legitimate reasons for being afraid. Because if you get too complacent, they're going to attack again. I mean, I'm glad that they're that vigilant. I want to introduce you my American family. It's my mom. Okay. My name is Arden. Yes. Graham. I've been married to Deloitte for 22 years. So it's my dad. And um, he doesn't love me because he, he doesn't have any place in his heart for me because his heart is for computers, you know? <laughs> yes. It was a really good experience for me. It was fun to watch you when you experience new things. It's when you had French fries for the first time and you're like, ooh, <laughs> these are really good. <laughs> I remember the time that uh... You helped Arda with her strike down at Fred Meyer. That was fun to you. I felt that it was something meaningful and fun too. So has America changed in all those years or you? Has it? Of yes. course. A lot. Well, we've had good times and bad times since then. I worked in aviation and we built avionics for small airplanes. And when we first heard about 9-11s, and we heard that a small airplane had hit the Twin one tower. of the towers. So I, I jumped up and turned the TV on because I was afraid one of our aviation um, navigators had misdirected somebody. <laughs> he oh, thought no, it was I'm his thinking, fault. <laughs> we can be guilty for something. <laughs> and then when oh, the no. second one hit, it was like terrorists. Yeah. We thought in America it would never come here, but it came here. We're more aware of it now, too. I think it has, has impacted the country financially, though. I think that's part of the scare in the stock market, is that something like this can happen again. Within a day, destroy things. Oh, and, and we worry that they'll attack the financial system. There is a lot of fear that wasn't there before. You just worry that what's going to happen next. Remember on the BART train the other day with Sean, his family? A man got on and he was wearing the headdress of somebody and I thought what if he has a palm <laughs> it's, it's like alert alert <laughs> I know I know but that's, that's our self-preservation we watch for it and yeah. if we think it's happening then we'll do something about it the military is to stay on full alert dispersal of population and assets against air attack to stay in place you won't know the mobilization alarms if you hear them act immediately, he sighed. And let's pray the war is over. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. That's Jolie. Oh, Jolie. Like oh. Paul. She looks a lot I mean, it's been like 15 years since 9-11. But terrorism is still there. The attacks that they had in Paris. At least we haven't had any major attacks in the United States. So, but to hear that it can happen in Paris and other places in the world, it makes people nervous. They are changing our constitution in a way that most of us don't like, in the name of more security. And th this whole gun thing is just ridiculous. There's no way most Americans are ever going to let Obama or What's her name? Hillary. Hillary. <laughs> or anyone else take away our guns. Because that's a last defense against a bad government. John doubted the government Fredericks represented would be willing to drop a neutron bomb on them. 
two or three fuel air explosives could nevertheless destroy his beloved valley and all whom he held dear. A lot of these books and movies all show other countries coming in and invading us. And so we have that kind of fear in the back of our minds. It had to end now. Ask the question, why do we have so many enemies? And this is the, the thing today in America. People don't want to ask this question. Why do they hate us? Why do we have so many enemies? Nobody wants to have this discussion. We created this monster in Afghanistan, right? We armed them, we trained them, we emboldened them, we gave them the support, and then they turned against us. The whole idea of the war on terror, I, I, I think it's obnoxious. When we don't know who our target is, when we do it based on non-facts, preconceived notions or on ideas that we have about someone we wanted to target anyway. Here we are, the mightiest empire, and we cannot defeat these people who live in caves, whether it's Syria or Afghanistan. We have bases all around the world. We spend trillions of dollars on the defense budget, but somehow we can't find these people, and we can't destroy them. Why? Why can't we stop them? Why did this war, why is it still going on 15 years later? Personally, I think it's because at this point it's a business. It's business, people are making so much money. What do we get? We get insecurity, we get fear, we get danger of all sorts. The more we get involved in the Middle East, the more uh, powerful these terrorist groups become, the more fanatical they become. They see us as invaders, and now they want their revenge. I probably feel the same way that a lot of folks feel, helpless. What can I personally do? I really don't know. It's very anxiety-provoking, I would say. Unfortunately, I'm very sorry to say this, but it's probably a matter of time before another big terrorist attack happens in the U.S. Is that where we're heading? Is it too late to stop that?